What's up everybody, welcome back. In my last video, I showed how to upgrade an infinity pedal with an Arduino to make it a little bit more compatible and use some custom software to be able to configure button mappings. This time, I've done another update, and this is wireless. So let me show you a little demo of it working, and then I'll show you how it's built. So first thing, we'll just plug it in here to this battery pack. I'll turn on. Let's go ahead and launch Time Crisis. So there you go. I'll show you how this thing's made. So go ahead and open my control panel here. And inside, you can see one half of the system. This is a control board that I've built using an Arduino Pro Micro. And this controls a couple different functions. Uh, I've got some solenoids mounted on either side in the box here that are controlled by the left and right flipper buttons. And this just gives you a little bit of feedback, a little bit of a snap if you're playing pinball games, for example. Uh, and those are controlled through these relays, which are connected to the Arduino. Uh, this red wire coming off here is I've got the player one and start buttons are LED enabled. But by being controlled through this Arduino, I can actually turn them on and off. And then this circuit board here in the middle is the wireless receiver. That's a NRF 24L01. I'll leave a link in the description to all of the, the parts and things that I've used to build this. And then of course the Arduino Pro Micro that controls everything. These yellow and blue wires are the inputs from the left and right buttons that control the flippers. And then it's connected via USB and via serial I've got some programs and different things that I can run uh, to configure it. This wireless board, I've got another LED right there, and that's just an indicator for when I go ahead and power up the pedal. If I plug this in, you see that yellow light comes on, and that just indicates that it's successfully communicating with the pedal, it's receiving input, and it's ready to go. If I unplug it, the light will go out and indicate that it's lost connectivity. So that's the control board here. Uh, I'll drop right now a wiring diagram of how I've got this all set up. These are available on my GitHub, so if you go back and look at it, you can see the components and how everything's wired together if you want to replicate a system like this. And using some auto hotkey scripts, I can do things like enable the flippers. So by giving it that command, now my flipper buttons are enabled so I get that feedback. If I want to be a little bit quieter, use that hotkey and now the button doesn't do anything. Similarly with those LEDs. 
come back here on my control panel. You can see them there. If I give it that hotkey, the LEDs come on, or I can toggle that off as well. So that's the control board in the control panel here and the receiver for the pedal. I'll show you what I've done inside the pedal to make that happen. All right, so you can see I've got the pedal back open here. I've got my Pro Micro removed out of there, all the wires disconnected so that I could make some modifications to the circuit. And here it is, uh, the little package that I've put together. Just so you can see for a size comparison, it'll slip in here just fine. So it made it pretty tiny. What we've got here is the NRF24 transceiver module, a 470 microfarad capacitor that goes on the power lines of the uh, transceiver just to stabilize power. Got them wired in here, but on the Pro Micro, the MISO and MOSI pins are flipped, so they don't line up exactly with the daughter board of the transceiver. So I got some wires to kind of crisscross them around. Uh, you can see on the bottom here, this is actually the daughter board that you can get with these transceivers that has the 3.3 volt reg uh, regulator on it, uh, as well as then just pinouts to be able to connect it. Uh, I have removed the header that comes with it and then clean out the the holes there so that I could mount it directly to it without plugging it in. So it's all soldered up and together. Uh, I got the positive and negative wires going to VCC and ground on the Pro Micro. And then on the back here, it's kind of interesting. I have an NPN transistor that is just acting as a switch between five volts and ground through a 22 ohm resistor. And then there's a 1K resistor for the, the base. Uh, what this is for is I'm going to be using a power brick like this one, just a USB power pack. And this has an auto shutoff feature where if it doesn't detect enough current being pulled, it will just automatically shut off. And, and this little circuit here doesn't draw enough current. When it's normally running, even transmitting constantly, it's pulling about 35 to 40 milliamps. And that's just not enough to keep this thing, that power brick running. So with that tran transistor, just connecting through a resistor from power to ground, they've, I've got code running on the Arduino that every one second out of every 20 seconds, it flips on. So about every every 20 seconds, it'll kick on for one second and draw about 150 milliamps. And that pulse every 20 seconds is enough to trip the, the timer on the power brick and keep it powered up. So that's what I've got going on there. I'm going to go ahead and install it in the pedal. And we should have a wireless infinity pedal. All right, so this is the final product of how it all fits in there. Uh, I'm hoping when I put this pedal back on, it doesn't conflict with anything. I don't think it will, but we'll see about that. We'll see if I need to redo any positioning, but tested it out just with it still open, works perfectly, and we'll button this thing back up and then give it a test. All right, so now that we've got the circuit boards and hardware put together, Let's talk about flashing the firmware and software. So I have a link in the description, but here is a link to my GitHub project. And over here on the right is a recent release for the Frankenpedal 2.0.0 release. So go ahead and click on that. There's a zip file here. Click that and that will go ahead and download. We'll view this in the folder and we'll extract it. So inside this folder, you will see a few different files. 
One is the Frankenpedal EXE application. This is what allows you to remap button configurations on the pedal using Windows software. If you're happy and, and you don't need to, to remap anything, if you just want to set them to static outputs using the Arduino code, perfect, absolutely perfect. Otherwise, you can use this application to write them from, from Windows. And then this file here is a defaults.json file where you can put some default information like the COM port, the baud rate, as well as the default pedal configuration that you want to, to write. So when you run the application, you can just pass the defaults command and it will always run those defaults rather than passing every single time what keys or mouse buttons you want mapped. Then in here in the Arduino firmware folder, you'll see a few different folders as well. Uh, this first one is the Frankenpedal wired firmware. And so this is the original firmware with some modifications uh, and enhancements that allow you to run a pedal using a Arduino Pro Micro. It doesn't have to be an infinity pedal. It can be any pedal at all, just using that control board. Uh, but this will allow it to operate and talk with the Frankenpedal Windows application. And this is plugged in via USB. But we'll take a look here at the wireless code and we'll go ahead and open this with Arduino. This is what you would flash to the Pro Micro if you were doing this wireless mod. So it's a pretty simple application. The one thing you will have to do is this leverages the RF24 library. So you will have to go into the library manager and then just search once this loads up, just search RF24. And the one you want is this RF24 by TMRH20. And you can see I've got version 1.4.0 installed. You'll need this installed in order to compile this firmware. So a couple other things in here is I've got a three button pedal. So I've defined here pedal left, pedal middle, pedal right. And these are the pins on my Pro Micro where I've wired these inputs. These will change for your configuration. In addition, if you are gonna use the, the battery pack and it's got the similar auto shut off, this is the pin that I'm using to control that transistor to boost the power so that it stays on. You can have any number of pins. If you've only got one, just define one. If you've got seven, just define seven. Right now, this code will support eight out of the box. So anywhere in between that one to eight, you're all good. The wireless control module uses an SPI interface. So some of the pins on that interface are hardwired on the Arduino. They're the SPI pins on that Arduino hardware. Two of the pins though, the chip enable and chip select CE and CS are up to you. And so what I've done here is we'll define those in these variables as well. And then here, just this array based on the pins and the number of pedals that I've got on my setup, I just put those and define them here. So based on this, all of this setup here, everything else should just take care of itself. If I've got eight integers defined in this array, it'll loop through and it will process all eight outputs. And so what I mean by process on the wireless side is this is just going to constantly stream out a single byte of information where each bit in that byte is the status of a pedal. So for example, I've got three pins here what this is going to be streaming out is always just 000, 000, 000. So a single byte. And the way this is designed is it's from kind of reverse priority order. So this left pin, if I've got three of these, this left pin is going to be this bit 
This middle pin is going to be this bit, and this right pin is going to be the lowest order bit. So in the case of I've got the middle button pressed down, the byte that I'm going to be sending is this payload right here. And then on the receiver side, I'm parsing out this byte to know which pedal's been pressed, and then sending the configured key response to that pedal into the computer. So right now, all of these bits, so the first five bits here will always be zeros because I've only got three pins configured. And then these three will switch between zero and one based on if that pedal is depressed. If I go ahead and open the receiver, the Arduino controller here, you see this also requires that RF24 library, so make sure you've got that configured. Uh, a bunch of these pins you may or may not have. If you just want to set up the wireless receiver, great. If you want to do the full thing with the solenoids, that's up to you. I've just defined the input pins for those solenoid buttons, uh, the output pins that control the relays, the output pin that turns on and off my LEDs. I've defined my chip enable and chip select pins, and then the pin that's going to control that status LED. And then just right here, I've defined how many pedals I'm going to be using. So really with this configuration here, this is really all you need. The rest of the code will take care of itself based on these variables. And so why we need that pedal count is when we get into the mapping procedure and the reading of the, the byte, it just knows what to to loop through and look for. So we're listening for a byte of data. If we get that data read, we'll pass that into this process pedal input data. And if we look at what's going on there, I just loop through the pedal counts, read the bits of data, and either press the pedal, send the signal that the pedal is pressed, or if, it's, if I release it, send the release pedal command to release that, that button. And then for the configuration, the payload that gets sent to the Arduino starts with a pound. And if it sees a pound, it knows that whatever follows it is going to be bindings for your, your pedals. So I see the pound key and then up to my pedal count, I'll continue to read characters from the serial bus and map them to that pedal function. If you set this up the way kind of I've, I've shown here, all you would need to change is defining the right pins for certain things, specifically for the radio chip enable chip select, and if you want a status LED or not, and then the number of pedals that this is going to be expecting. So the final piece of the puzzle is just this Franken pedal application. Uh, you can see here if I run help, you can get some information about what the application does, some of the reserved characters used for defining the mouse clicks. Here's all the different commands. So you would write something like this, right? Now I don't have my pedal or the controller configured here, so I'm gonna get an error that I can't find the COM port. But this would attach to COM port four, try to communicate with a one one five two hundred baud rate, and then set the following pedals. The left pedal would be the letter A, middle pedal is left mouse button, right pedal is right mouse button. But you could keep doing comma separated values if you've got more pedals or just send dash S A if you've only got a, a single pedal set up. So that's really it. I hope people find this interesting, informative, and if you so inclined, go ahead and try it out. Hit me back in the comments if you're running into issues or problems or jump over into the send in discord. I'm pretty active there, so I'll respond back. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Got a lot of other projects in the pipe here that uh, I want to share, so we'll try to keep these coming at a, a more regular pace. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good one.